We've now done four of our six units. We've had two out of our three exams. I want to take a minute, stop, pause, and sort of reflect on where we are. So in this class, our big question is, what is light? And what is an electron? That's what we're trying to understand, is the answer to those two questions. So how are we doing on that? So unit one, way back at the beginning, what did we learn? We learned that both light and electrons have both particle and wave properties. They're neither particles nor waves. They're both at the same time and neither all at once, right? And we can connect the particle and wave properties through this expression. P equals H over lambda, the de Broglie relation, right? P is momentum, that's a particle thing. Lambda is a wavelength, that's a wave thing. And then we applied conservation of energy to some simple interactions. What happens if I shoot light up, matter, antimatter, annihilation, all sorts of straightforward examples. Then we said, OK, let's take a light wave or let's take an electron and have it fly through either empty space or through a material. What can it do? Well, if it goes from one material to another, it can do two things. Usually it does both. It can bounce or it can bend. It can reflect or it can refract. Usually it does a little bit of both. And we went through and applying those two ideas that electron can either bounce or bend when it enters a material, we get light. I mean, we get mirrors, we get lenses, we get microscopes. And we mostly focused in the context of light, but it all works exactly the same. An electron microscope works exactly the same way as a light microscope does. You have different materials, different indices of refraction. You build an electron lens instead of a light lens, and there you go. That's an electron microscope. OK? So we saw what can happen when light goes from and electrons go from one material to another. We didn't have to deal much with the fact that light and electrons are waves when we talked about that. We had to do it a little bit. So then in unit three, we're like, OK, we know these things are waves. What does that mean when we know that light and electrons are waves? We know that they can interfere with each other, right? Light waves can interfere. Electron waves can interfere. That gets us to interferometers. That explains the double slit experiment, all thin films, why soap bubbles have colors, all that good stuff. All right? And again, mostly we focused on light, but it works for electrons too. There were a couple of next time problems where I asked you to do the double slit for electrons or neutrons and that sort of thing. Just sort of remind you that it works the same. So then we got to unit four, and we said, OK. We have been ignoring the fact that electrons have charge up to this point. We know they have charge. What does that mean? What does that imply? What does that do? OK, what does that mean? It means that if they have charge, they will make an electric field. Also, if they have charge, they will feel an electric field. They will create electric potentials. They will experience electric potentials. So in the process of trying to understand what an electron is, we have to understand what charge actually is. And to understand what charge is, we had to understand electric fields and electric potentials. We had to introduce this new idea of the electric field and the electric potential. Okay. That's where we stand. Now we're just going to really, unit five is about really just applying the ideas, about applying the ideas of electric potentials and electric fields. Not really any new, a lot of new concepts here. The same fundamental ideas of fields make charges feel forces is what we're talking about. We're just going to be applying it to a wide variety of situations from light bulbs to neurons. That's what we're going to do. All right? And I know that in one of the bio courses right now, you're talking about the Nernst, Nernst potential. I know I'm mispronouncing that. We're going to calculate it next week. 
we're going to calculate that famous 70 millivolts. All right? And then unit 6, which is not on here, we're going to come back, we're going to introduce magnetism and tie it all up into a nice bow and answer the question that someone asked me on the first day when they asked, light is a wave, what's doing the waving? It's going to take us to unit 6 to answer that question. It's a cool, cool answer. So that's where we're headed. That's where we stand. That's where we're going.